Congratulations, members of Pan Autumn, on your 35th anniversary. All of you have created an incredible history and are continuing to write these next chapters. I consider it remarkable already if I see an organization started and run by a group of volunteers going for a decade or more. But you have been doing it and doing it so well for 35 years. This is truly impressive. I should actually not be surprised by this because you have in your midst amazing women such as Rita Nakashima Brock and Jane Yuramura, who have, in the best sense of that term, an entrepreneurial spirit. I still remember meeting Jane, who seemed to have single-handedly planned, organized, and run the first few Aparis, which were better known as friends of Jane in those early days. And I could not, and still cannot, keep up with Rita's work titles. She just has a way of freedom and an ability to do what she wants to do at different times and seasons of her life, as opposed to being tied down to a job because of the need to meet one's financial obligations. I was honored to be invited to review the publication that Pan Autumn put together off the menu. I think it was for the ARSBL meeting in 2007. 13 years later, I still think this is one of the best anthologies I've ever read because it's a coherence that one seldom finds in a volume of collected essays. Having edited a book or two myself, I could only imagine how much work all of you took to create an anthology in which contributors not only converse on overlapping topics, but also reference each other. The volume is a stunning achievement. Talking about off the menu, I must say that one of the greatest things about Panadam is the food. I was fortunate to be allowed to participate in the opening session of Panadam's meeting in Berkeley a decade ago now, I think. And I witnessed the amazing spread of food that was prepared. Members of Panadam always know the best Asian restaurants in every city. If you want to eat good Asian food, ask if they will let you join them. I remember Su Pak taking a group of us to a Korean restaurant in, I believe, Manhattan. I have no sense of direction, so I really did, don't know where I was. It was after a meeting at Union many years ago, I think. But to this day, I can still remember the seafood pancake I had there. There was another occasion when I went with Su and Chung Ha Kim to a Korean restaurant during an AAR meeting. Again, I cannot remember where, but I remember both of them sweating thick sweats on their foreheads as they ate their bowl of spicy soup noodles. The food was so spicy hot that once in a while they had to stop eating and use their hands to fan themselves, but they kept on saying that it was great. Now I'm a wimp when it comes to spicy food. So I guess this is a culinary cultivation that I would never undergo or understand. But I did learn a new lesson this year. When you go to eat with these smart and strong women, it is best to do it family style than to venture into ordering something on your own and for yourself. Jin Yang Che, Nami Kim, and Bo Yong Lee took me to a Korean restaurant before the last annual meeting in San Diego and we did not do it family style. I ended up getting some kind of food poisoning, but they were all okay. I should have known better. When you try to follow other people who know more than you do, you need to follow them all the way. And all the women are not only entrepreneurial, smart, strong, and know their food. They're also a lot of fun. Who would forget watching Christine Pei doing karaoke at the Wabash Center? This feminist ethicist sang with such focus and abandonment, even when many of us were rolling on the floor laughing. I've also seen Kok Pui Lan singing or lip singing an old Chinese folk song or trying to dance. And how by doing so, she modeled for us how we should never be afraid to try something new. When it comes to dancing, Gayo Yi topped them all, I think, when she led a group of us in a line dance when we celebrated her SBL presidency in San Diego last November. 
her most fierce competitor on this front might be Anbei Ham, who led a group of us at Wabash on a K-pop dance. I still have that video on my computer. It was great fun. In addition to all of this, you are such a diverse and productive group of scholars. Just in my own field of New Testament studies, I have benefit, benefited so much from the friendship and scholarship of people such as Mary Foskett, Chen Jacob, Jen Jen Lin, Janet Oak, and of course, Jin Young. I'm now slowly going through the new volume that Puilan edited on Asian and Asian American women in theology and religion. The essays are personal, insightful, and enlightening. I highly recommend it. Now, I don't know why biblical scholars think that 40 years make a generation, but I do know that in the last 35 years, there have been generations and generations of women coming up through Penardum. I can see that in Puilan's anthology I just mentioned, and in your last virtual webinar, the intergenerational conversation that you have been facilitating in general, and in both of these families in particular, are simply marvelous. Well, I can go on forever about how I admire and salute all of you, my scholars and friends of Pan Autumn, but I won't. Let me close by saying that I hope we'll be able to get in person again soon, and I really hope you will make an, ex an exception once in a while for me to join part of your gatherings. We Asian American guys have a lot to learn from you. Congratulations again on your 35th anniversary. You have made a huge difference to all Asian Americans in theology and in ministry. We are all grateful and thankful for all that you have done and will continue to do.